Hello, hello. Thank you so much. It's uh, yeah. Thank you so much. It's a huge pleasure to be here with you. Um, so my name is Mirko Topalski, and um, my designers always put my image there because they think it's going to be a huge hole. You won't be able to see me, and then you know, based on this picture, you can approach me later and talk to me. So you all of you see me, so so it's cool. So uh, yeah, I come from a company called Ipix Entertainment. Uh, we are not still. Oh, I, I just want to. Um, turn on my timer just to be sure that we don't go overboard because I have a tendency to talk a lot. Okay, so um, um, yeah, I'm not smiling. Why am I? Why am I not smiling? I, I am. I'm smiling a bit. That's because of you. But really, I shouldn't be smiling because I'm, I want to talk to you about um, our experience with free to play. Um, yeah, a lot of failures. So I'm not gonna do like do this, don't do that. I'm just gonna show you what we did, and then you guys can be like. These guys are really stupid. We're not going to do that. So you, you, hopefully you learn what not to do from this presentation. Is it a failure? We don't know. Ultimately, we'll see in, in a few months, in a few years, right? Uh, I heard they say the failure is only when you stop trying. So, so we'll see. Um, so um, I'm going to talk a bit about our company because, as I said, we are not still a household name. So I just want to give you a quick background of, of who we are and what we do and then um, talk to you about our free-to-play experience. Uh, everybody's talking about free-to-play these days. So. Um, yeah, so um, our company is 10 years old, exactly, pretty much exactly in a few days, and this was our first logo. I did it. I made the logo. I'm not a, I'm not a designer, but uh, based on the fact that I did it, you know how big the company was. It was like two guys, three guys. Um, so what we did first, um, we made this. It's called Pyroblazer. Uh, it's a futuristic sci-fi racer. So I don't know how much you know about sci-fi racers. The Wipeout was the most famous one. Uh, so these games don't really sell. We didn't do our homework. And then we started with a very small three-man team wanting to do a procedurally generated sci-fi racer. Really simple idea. And then we featured creeped our way into three-year development, uh, three development process that made this huge beast. It was almost AAA, so one of the bigger indie games uh, made at the time. Uh, so we're talking 2008. Uh, at the time, we had to make our own engine. At the time, there were no engines that you could use. Uh, we used AGF Physics, uh, which was later acquired by NVIDIA, and so on and so on. I mean, needless to say, the game was a total disaster. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. Um, uh, at the time, uh, being based in Serbia wasn't really doing us many favors. We couldn't leave the country. We were under embargo. Uh, we were bombarded by NATO. Uh, so it was really uh, hard. And when I uh, talked to publishers, they were, they were like, hey, why don't you sit in a plane and come to America and we can discuss your game, which is something I couldn't do at the time. So we basically gave it to the first publisher who wanted to publish it. And it was, of course, a fraudulent agent. And we never saw uh, a dollar out of this game. Um, discouraged by that fact, what can you do? Well, yeah, I mean, we can do what, you know, we can outsource, right? A lot of people saw our game and they were like, well, this game is, uh, we like your game, we like what you do, do you want to work for us? And we said yes, and we worked for a variety of publishers all over the world. Um, art, music, sound, uh, optimization of 3D models, porting to different platforms. We had experience in uh, PSP, uh, Nintendo DS, Nintendo Wii, and so on. But as you know, uh, outsourcing is not the prettiest of things you can do. Um, it's, you're usually not paid very much. You're usually not able to say due to the NDA that you actually worked on a specific game. So it wasn't really a dream come true. But uh, we were still uh, doing games. And then, um, then uh, in late 2010, at a Casual Connect, and that's why I think it's really good to come to Casual Connect, and that's where we signed our first big deal, and I mean, the biggest deal to date. We met these guys, uh, Big Fish Games, you probably heard about them, so they're one of the biggest casual publishers. And uh, at the time, they were doing uh, mostly HOPA games, which stands for Hidden Object Puzzle Adventure. It's a premium kind of game. I um, sometimes a joke, and I say it's a devolution of the point-and-click adventure. So it's simpler than point-and-click adventures were. Um, anyway, we made a game for them, and that sort of that that was pretty good. That went uh, fairly well. We were around 10 to 15 people at a time, and I was like hungry. I said, like, give me more and more. They were like, you know, risk managing it in the beginning. Like, okay, take two games, take three games, take four games, and so. In the next four years up to today, uh, we made a bunch of games. This year alone, we made 24 hidden object puzzle adventure games, which I think is the biggest number anyone ever did on this planet. Um, so yeah, those are like uh, PC, Mac, iOS, Android games. Uh, we are over 300 people. I stopped counting. I think it's like 320. But it's just going up and up and up and up and up. And that's all cool. That's great. But the hidden object market is not expanding. Yeah, by the way. Um, 
So these are some of the franchises we hold. I don't know if you know Mystery Case Files. Is like They say it has one billion quick, uh, downloads during its entire lifetime, which is like a totally crazy number. And we also uh, have Dark Parables and uh, Hidden Expedition, one of the oldest in object games. Anyway, this market is not growing and we need to move on. And moving on to where, to what, um, yeah, before that, our new logo, we finally have a designer amongst those 300 people and he made a new super cool logo with a super cool slogan, which is creating worlds. Um, so, um, we want to do free to play like everybody else, right? And um, what are we going to do? We decided we're going to do a match tree game. Like, how stupid can you guys be? Like, everybody's doing match trees. Yeah, well, that's because whenever you want to do something new, you can choose. Like, there are multiple paths. And for us, there was a path of, like, try something completely new, completely innovative, completely experimental, or um, do something trial, you know, something tried. Um, you know, clone a game that's in the top 10 or top 50, top grossing, and that's what we decided to do. I don't know if that was a good choice. Maybe it wasn't. It's up to you to decide. Uh, we decided to take that path because uh, we already had a huge number of people working on something that was bringing in cash, and we just felt that it would be too hard for us to sit on two stools at the same time, like try something super innovative, super new, while trying to maintain that big team. And we were like, let's do something uh, that has been done, especially when you have a publisher, and publisher today's, uh, today publishers are like, hey, I mean, how are you going to monetize this, right? And it's really hard to explain how you're going to monetize something that has never been done before. So it's really hard. So that's why we chose Match 3. So, um, yeah. Um, so is making free-to-play games easy? Whew. It's the hardest thing out there. Our publisher, they say free-to-play is the greatest challenge gaming ever faced, and I think that you can't understand how big of a challenge is, how big of a challenge that is before you actually start. And I can just say to you, it's hard, 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 harder than you think, and you're gonna see that from our videos. So moving on, um, yeah, it took us two years um, to come to where we are, and where we are is the game is still not published, it's still not launched. So why two years? We screwed up a lot of things. Um, but also, we wanted to make a great game. So that's what everybody's talking about today. Like, don't publish a million games, publish one game, but really, really work on it. Really work on your analytics. Really work on your metrics. Really deliver a game that has an amazing LTV that you can earn a bunch of money and so on and so on and so on. Um, obviously, all of those things are publisher imposed. Um, so if you're a self-published developer, you might want to take a different approach, but I'm just sharing everything I have with you. So I'm being super, ridiculously super honest. Okay, so. Let me see what we have. Yeah, so the game is called Free the Witch. It's a match game where you go and free the witches. So what we're gonna do at this point, and I think I'm definitely going overboard with time, I wanna show you seven video files. And as those video files go, I'm gonna talk to you about the mistakes we made. Those seven video files, they show the seven iterations of this game in the past two years. And you can see how the game evolved, what we did, what worked, what didn't work, and I'll just walk you through some of the metrics and, and things so on. At the moment, I need to find a folder with the videos. Um, let me just see if it might be here. Hmm? Oh, it is, great. So let's see if this is gonna play. On which screen it's, oh, so it's playing on my screen. Okay. Okay, so um, I just need to be louder than the music. The music is irrelevant, so if we can just, yeah, cool. So first thing, so first thing, a bunch of text in the beginning. No, 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 no. People don't want to read, unfortunately, today. That's why we are so stupid, mostly. So people just don't want to read. So, you know, reduce your text. Uh, the, the music can go a bit lower. Feel free to lower the music. So, a lot of text in the beginning. And that's our main character. You wouldn't really say likable, but he's like... Okay, another big no-no. A loading screen. And look at how long it takes. Optimize your technology. You have to be fast. None of the best-selling mastery games have loading screens. A big no-no number three, the map. It scrolls in all directions, left, right, up, down. It's really confusing. It's hard to read. You don't know which levels you completed, which you didn't. So it's not easily readable. So that's what you need to think about. It doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be readable. Everybody needs to understand it. And then there's the game itself. Obviously, this is the first prototype, so it looks crappy. Um, but yeah, for a first prototype, it's maybe not that bad. You can see some of the basic mechanics that we had at the time. Um, you will see that the actual elements that drop in are really like clunky. That it really doesn't feel nice, doesn't feel expensive. And this is something I'm going to talk about later. I feel that's like super important. And then the Commodore 64 kind of level cleared. 
thing. And then, yeah, I'm gonna stop it here because it's really short. We were like, so what are our unique selling points? Let's put in mini games. Let, let's put in things nobody other has. And the thing I've learned uh, from then till now is game development should be more of a subtractive thing and less of, a, of an additive thing. So you can add, 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 but remember to take out, take out, take out. So whatever you don't need in a game, if there's no clear reason why you have this in the game, if there's no clear advantage, no clear added value, just take it out. Trust me, it's gonna help your free-to-play game a lot. So that was the mini game where you kill flies um, and a bit more. So this was another mechanic that really looked cool at the moment. Like you have the frog, the frog eats the flies. It's like never before seen in a match tree game. Really great, unique selling point. But you know, in testing, you just find out that people just don't care about your frog. People want to play match trees the way they know them. And the takeaway from that is when you innovate, innovate just a bit. Don't innovate too much. Okay, moving on. So second iteration, I don't know where my mouse is. Um, let me see if my keyboard can help, no. Okay, so here it is. So what's happening now? Um, we understand that there's too much text in the, in, at the beginning. You can see a nicer main menu, and I can tell you right away, don't spend your time on nicer art. Spend your time on optimizing your game mechanics, making them better. So instead of too much text, we have a nice intro with less text, but still, it's too many seconds before the player, you know, when the player enters the game, till the moment he starts playing the game, there are too many seconds. You wanna reduce that to as little as possible. Ideally, one second. So that's the map. You see it's much better, it's much clearer, but still, it goes left, right, up, down, not good. We want the map to scroll in only one direction. So the game, we've polished it, but he talks, text. No, we don't want text. He talks before and after the level. So what was the idea? I have to stop this for a second. Um, I'm sorry for speaking so quickly, but there's so much I want to tell you and so little time. So the thing here is uh, we wanted a narrative-driven match tree game, and that just doesn't work. It's like saying, I had this crazy idea, like, let's make a clash of clans uh, heyday kind of mashup. You have an army, but you also have your farm fields, and it's just the two audiences for that, they're just so different that you can't really do that, or at least I think that you can't. So this was the same. Um, a narrative-driven match tree just doesn't work because people play their match trees in their toilets and their buses, so yeah, it just doesn't work. Or at least it didn't work for us. As I said, I'm not gonna give you any advices, I'm just telling you what we did and you decide for yourself. So, it looks nicer, slightly nicer, Again, irrelevant. The mechanic, the falling in of the pieces, it's exactly the same. So no improvement was made there. And that's a big, big, big mistake on our side. So as you can see, it's narrative driven. You open one by one of those locks and then here are some other levels. It's a standard drop down mechanic where you need to drop down an element. Okay, so that's that. So moving on, iteration number three. So what we have here, let's see what we have here. So even, even, so less, again, less text and even deeper integration with the story. So he actually says like, I'm in this crystal ball, come and rescue me. So we actually play the level at that location. Um, but just imagine that we have 1,000 levels. <laughs> imagine making 1,000 images. So that doesn't work. You have to account for being able to make a lot of levels. Uh, which is what we in the industry refer to as a content treadmill. So you need to be able to, to you know, come out with a lot of content quickly. You can see that the interface, it's been really polished. And for the first time, the map is scrollable in only one direction, which is up down, which is really cool. You see, it's so much more readable. It's so much, you know, it makes so much more sense. So that's something good that we actually finally understood. And this is a boss battle. Uh, trust me, when we decided to make this game, I can swear to God there was no game out there that had a boss battle in a match -free game. Today, I don't need to remind you of how many games featured that particular mechanic. I'd say hundreds. And also, we are experimenting here with the various element types. And if you're making a match -free, I strongly suggest you do that. Um, so it's, I think it's common nowadays. Everybody you know, tries with different... Uh, which with different elements and this is really also important. Let me just see if I can 
established. So what's happening here is this is like a tiny tower kind of vertical uh, witch village, which is the secondary mechanic. It is our unique selling point. All the time while making this game, we were like, what's our unique selling point? What's our secondary mechanic? We all know that our primary mechanic is match three, but what is in the core game loop our secondary mechanic? And this was one of the ideas. And I can tell you that we have been struggling with this for a long time. And I don't know what the suggestion can be, but I can just say if you make up an amazing game, I don't think people are going to be like, hey, where's my secondary mechanic? I don't see my... S Nobody cares. We'll, we spent so much time and so much resources on this, and in the end, we just threw it away. So, yeah, secondary mechanic. I mean, if you have a secondary mechanic, it has to be relevant to your game, which this definitely was not. So another, you know, you can see how integrated this is. Mid-level, so I've never seen this in a match three game. So mid-level, you open the door, and the guy comes out and you fight him. And I mean, even though this really, I mean, to me, this appeals, this looks like a good idea, it is in the trash at the moment. So it's not gonna be in the final game. Okay, um, so moving on. I think we're definitely gonna go slightly overboard, but I'm, I'm trying my best. So now there are parallax effects. The menu is even more prettier. So every time we have a more prettier menu, and of course, you know what effect that has on metrics? None, right? Don't make a pretty menu, unless you do it right from the start. So uh, minor, minor. I think minor like polish. So finally, you can see that the elements now have a like a squiggly effect. They fall in, which is something that we should have done a long time ago. Like make your core game mechanic beautiful. The main character not really likable, and this is the second try of the secondary mechanic. It's crafting in the witch village, like similar to Angry Birds Epic. But again, casual players don't want to craft. They don't want to know, uh, you know, their uh, recipes. They don't want to wait. They just want to either buy the booster or just get it for free. They just don't want to go through this. This was, of course, a placeholder, but I'm sharing everything I have with you. I hope you appreciate the honesty. And then another boss, just to say, just to show how, um, you know, interesting the bosses were. So this is a fire boss, and you need to get the water to him so that you can um, extinguish him. Okay, that's that. So let's see where we are. So fifth iteration, yeah. Um, so yeah, and even prettier menu, woo! And well, I mean, this one is really pretty, but it won't last long. So obviously now the play button is really obvious and that's what you need to do, make your play button big and visible. Um, Zoran, our lead uh, game designer in this game, uh, game producer, actually. As you can see, we redesigned the, the character finally, and now the story is, it's more prettier, it's shorter, but it is still too many seconds before the player plays the game. So don't forget how important there, that is. There is a skip button right there, it's big and it's red, but you won't believe how many people struggle to actually find, uh, find that, uh, you know, find the button. So if I need to stop this at any moment, you just let me know. I think I have like five minutes. And so, yeah, the art is even further polished. We have new elements. They fall in more beautifully. Uh, all the booster effects are now more, more beautiful. Uh, the interface has been really streamlined. It takes a smaller portion of the screen. It's easier to read. It gives you less information. You know, less is more, definitely. As you can see, the, the finish uh, level screen is also much uh, more beautiful. Uh, the loading screen is still there, but it's uh, shorter. And this is something that I'll tell, uh, that I'll talk to you about in the next iteration. This is our final secondary mechanic, which is a caravan, which really makes sense because the witches have their own caravan. It fits into the story. It has sense. It's really, really cool. Except that it turns out that it's not. I just want you to see how many different iterations before success and. We are not really sure success is ever going to happen. So we're looking at iteration number six now. And so this is something that we soft launched December last year. And we felt that's it. That's it. It looks great. It has unique things that not, no other game has. It has a very unique art style. Um, it has a unique secondary mechanic, which is a sort of a horizontal um, tiny tower. So you build this caravan. Each of the wagons in this caravan actually has a specific feature. Um, the map is integrated into the screen, so there is no uh, going from map to the secondary mechanic for the player. 
the map is really readable. It's really simple, right? Uh, in this particular wagon, you can see all of your witches. You know, like uh, South Park would say in Chim Pokemon, you got to buy them all. So all of our witches are right there. You know, the player wants to collect them, hopefully. Um, and this caravan expands and it starts moving and it goes through different regions, so it's all really looking cool. Um, so this is the boss battle at that stage. So again, streamlined, simpler, just a bit of funny text, you know, just a bit of like conversation between our main character and our main opponent, um, really reduced to like minimum. Of course, in December last year, the, this game came back with horrible metrics. And I mean, we are talking here about a hundred million dollar game, so it was nowhere, 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 nowhere near that. <laughs> Okay, so that's that's the design of the witch at that time. Then still we have the crafting. It's so much simpler than ever before, but it's still not simple enough. We live in the 21st century, people do everything quickly. They just could not grasp this. It was just too complicated. We were churning, we had a churn there, we were losing players right there. Then obviously we added monetization for this particular build because it was going to soft launch. Um, and I just want to showcase a few more levels and a few more mechanics that we had uh, that are fairly uh, original. And yeah, this was another big thing. So after each level, we had a wheel, and this was really cool up to level 100. And after that, you're like, come on, I can't spin another wheel. So, you know, just think about that. Think about something that you have. You know, your game is potentially going to be Candy Crush. It's potentially going to have 400, 500, 600, 700 levels. You need to have things that are really, you know, fun even after that. So, here is the breaking point. December last year, the game doesn't work. I talk to my publisher, I tell them, let's publish this game and make a new one. And they're like, no, 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 we need to work on this more. That was a huge, huge, huge mistake. Because we're here one year later, we made this new version that you're gonna see, which is in every imaginable way better than this game. And the metrics are still not where they need to be. So what I'm giving to you is this. If you, if you soft launch a game and it's here, and you need to be here, just throw it away, right away. If you make a game and your metrics are here and you need to be here, then it's okay. You can work on it, you can iterate, you can add features, you can subtract features, and you can get to where you wanna be. But if you're so, 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 so far away, there is no way you can do it. Or, I mean, you can spend five years in soft launch, but that doesn't sound like a good business plan to me. So the final video that I have for you. So, the first thing you're gonna notice is the game is in portrait mode. Why? Well, you can have both, but if you have only one, you have to have portrait because the argumentation is your guys are in a bus with one hand they're holding for the, um, you know, to the bus, with the other hand they're playing. It has to be portrait mode because, you know, otherwise they can hold the phone. Intro, look at this. It's two seconds, literally. That's it. And it shows you all the levels or some of the levels in the game. So the intro serves as a sort of selling point, like, hey, player, look at what you're gonna see in the game. Then the text, it's there, but it's minimum. You see, two sentences, it's done. You, you, you play the game. Even this is still too long, but it's much better than ever before. So the, the, the elements look beautiful. The animations are beautiful. The actual coming of the elements is really amazing. It's one of the, it's one of the better that I've seen. And trust me, I've played every match three game out there. Um, so, this is something you should do the first. If you're making a mastery game, do this first. Make your elements fall in beautifully. Um, so figure out your mechanic. Obviously, we changed the, the, the green guy with this uh, funky little witch that everybody likes. The map is really, really clear, really understandable. There are also rewards on the map. There are, um, there are branchings on the map, so the map can branch. But when I say branch, I mean minimally branched and of course there are pay gates you see the thorns those are pay gates i can't tell you if that works or not um there's a high churn there so a lot of players are lost at pay gates you have to experiment for yourself we also you just saw the the, the funky owl that's a helper of our main character and that's something that we learned that everybody likes everybody likes helpers of main characters i'm literally gonna be done in a minute just showing you uh, more uh, levels, more art. As you can see, you know, we added this um, mechanic that's also popular today. When you lose lives, you can 
uh, play the slot machine for maybe more lives. And then we teach you. There's a tutorial that teaches you right away. Uh, it's scripted that you can spend money to actually get rewards, which is good. Teach your players to spend money. I think that's really important. So while this is going, I'm going to tell you th the rest of the story. So this is a portal. That's, that's another unique feature. When you collect these diamonds, you can unlock a portal, which takes you to an alternate map where you can play three to four very, very, very hard levels. It's for the players that like, you know, like the um, super challenge. And it's super simple because you go back. It, it's not really branching. You go back in a second and you're at the old map. And I can tell you that the research has shown that players almost never go back. They just go up, 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 up. Very rarely do they come back to play um, previous levels. OK, so that's all I had. Uh, that's all the videos I have, just a moment. Um, this version that you saw, it, it, it went to soft launch in June or July, and it had horrible metrics. And we've been working ever since. There is a new version. If you want to see it, you can download it right away. It's live at the Croatian App Store. Why? Because Serbia doesn't have an App Store. It's such a crappy country. So it's, it's at the Croatian App Store. You can download it. You can try it. You can see what we've done. We did a bunch of uh, modifications, even from this build. It's so much, so much, so much better, trust me. And it's a game that can probably earn a bunch of money, but not enough money for you know, the needs that, that were set. So takeaways are just, you know, um, just you know, quickly iterate. Put it out as soon as possible. If the metrics are not looking good, go for another game. That's, that's what I would say based on my experience, but you can see what happens. And if you track us and, and look at what we're going to do, we'll see what this game is going to do, and we'll see what our next game is going to do. As far as I know, uh, Supercell released a few really, really, really crappy games before Clash of Clans. So that's it. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you learned something. Thank you very much. A ton of learning, really. Thank you so much. Um, are, are you available outside for questions? Because we're going to move. I will be in. available outside. So if anybody wants to talk to me, just yeah, just grab me. And I have two guys from my company here, so we can we can we can answer more questions. We can All right, more great, ground. great. Thank you so much again.